Discovery, launch director. Discovery, go ahead, sir. Well, CJ, the vehicle's clean and the teams are go. And this time, Mother Nature is cooperating, so it looks like third time really is the charm. We wish you and your team uh, good luck and Godspeed. Thanks, B, on uh, behalf of the crew of Discovery. Thanks to everyone who helped prepare for this mission. Let's go step up the uh, science on the International Space Station. And NTD Launch Director, you do have a go to launch Discovery. And I copy that, Launch Director. Discovery OTC, closing lock your rises, and this here OTC well. Discovery, roger. There goes the beanie cap crew. Let's go ahead and check the uh, tap in. Roger. 102, 102, auto, auto. Three, five, six. Seven, there we go, LVLH on the left. On the right. Houston Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. 3 at 104. Copy. Needles, needles are centering up. PC less than 50. Copy, Jose. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> 103, Team Ecos. Caught up on the live. Copy, Jose. There it is. All right, 25-8. All right, you can raise up your seat if you want to. Good. Timer. All right, good job. All right. That's Second working hard. to tank, and I'm waiting for the 22nd plus X. Lift up in your seat. There it goes. All right, we're waiting for 104. Four. One potato, two potato. I started it at 56. I will release it at 16 after. Well, uh, there's no experience on the planet quite like uh, the experience of leaving the planet. Uh, that rocket is just absolutely amazing, and uh, you've just had the ride of your life. Uh, you're recovering from it, and uh, looking around the cockpit to see how everybody else did. Everything's still lit up and just going like crazy. The sights and sounds and sensations are just unbelievable. Um, about halfway around the planet, we do an OMS-2 burn, so we still get a little acceleration. But uh, now you're in for just about two weeks of zero G, so now you're in for the second most interesting ride of your life. Uh, Nicole is uh, securing our watch there down on the mid-deck. One thing you learn right away is if you don't uh, tie it down or put it on some Velcro, you are not going to see it until uh, about time of the deorbit burn there. So we uh, just all really enjoyed the ascent. There's a lot of work to be done right away, uh, getting the payload bay doors open so that uh, those can provide cooling for the orbiter and getting a go for orbit operations really felt good to everybody. Uh, we were all just having a great time after uh, all that time in crew quarters, I can tell you that. There's a lot of things that aren't quite like simulations. Uh, one of them is all the stuff you have on the mid-deck. Uh, you have to get it all out, put it away, and make it livable. Uh, the, uh, the, the, the folks who have flown before know things like if you want to throw something away, some waste paper, you don't have to uh, pass it to somebody. You can just send it all the way across the, the cockpit and get it put away. Uh, uh, Jose really enjoyed uh, setting up the computers all the time, but he really enjoyed it a lot more on that night. Just had a lot of fun doing it. CJ told us always to keep our 1G orientation until we got used to things, and then, of course, he comes down uh, the steps head first right away just to show <laughs> he's been there before, and uh, the rules don't really apply to him. <laughs> so uh, Nicole setting up the ergometer. There's just a lot to do that first night. It's really like setting up a household. Uh, everything is well trained for us and we were ready to go. Occasionally we get a little bit delayed because things are so much fun and you just have to play a little bit, uh, spend a little time and then we all get back to work. Uh, morning of flight day two, uh, just getting some domestics done. You can see how much fun Nicole is having in space and uh, Pat as well taking care of some business. We, uh, we just did uh, some things like doing some burns that day to catch up. We also spent the day doing the inspection of our thermal protection system so that we were ready to go the next day. Uh, Jose is here uh, checking out uh, all the tools we'll use for rendezvous. 
the next day. Occasionally we do a burn with the Ohm's engines, uh, get about a 20th of a G out of that, and we always like to just let a timer go to make sure we're not at zero G, usually uh, 10 or 12 seconds for those burns. Okay, after inspection, the next big thing is the rendezvous phase of our flight, and you saw there uh, Nicole looking through the binoculars of what will be her uh, new home for the next uh, two and a half months or so. And, uh, and so what we end up doing is we start preparing for, for that phase of flight. And uh, one of the things that we do uh, when we get close enough to the uh, International Space Station is uh, we do an RPM. And that's uh, in, in addition to our flight day inspection, a flight day two inspection, we do a 360 degree rotation so that the uh, space station, International Space Station crew can take pictures of our thermal protection systems and that's another form of, uh, of inspection. And as you can see, we complete it and then uh, go on and continue into the docking phase of, uh, of our flight. And, uh, and as you can see, the payload doors are open. Uh, for, uh, for for cooling purposes, and of course you can see there the uh, multi-purpose logistics module. Raw TCS 0.07. Copy. HHLs maybe about 0.06. Here comes a BN. I'm going to do it. Okay. Should get it back in the yep, middle. Yeah, so that's we, okay. So we have yep. a good, a firm idea of what yeah, it is. that's exactly. Tux, Tux okay, warned us close. about that. Yeah. Okay. I think you got it up to about 0 .0, 0 0.09 there, so okay. that's nice. That worked good. Fingers on a button. That's more one. Outside over there. Big pedal overlap going outside. Don't move your hand. Okay. Pedal overlap. And Good closure. Capture fired. Do I capture light? Okay. All right. Looking for free drift. Look at the lights. Look at the lights. Station in Houston from Discovery. Capture confirmed. Did we get All right. It? Got flashing red. Flash All right. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Good job. As you can see, it's pretty obvious when we make contact, and uh, everybody's very happy because uh, now we're uh, made it to the International Space Station. Uh, our next job is to work and, and start working the uh, our end of the hatch while the uh, International Space Station crew uh, start working at their end. And in a, in a matter of a few hours, uh, what we do is we're able to uh, make contact with them and uh, we're gonna be with them for the next uh, n nine days or so. An ISS commander announcing, uh, Gennady Padalka announcing our arrival. And uh, first to uh, come into the International Space Station is our own commander, CJ Sturkow, and the rest of the crew comes down. They're actually very happy to see us because we come bringing fresh fruit and vegetables, so I think that's what they're the most happy about. And we also bring them a few uh, souvenir t-shirts because what, be, what would a trip be without a souvenir t-shirt? And you would think 13 people would be pretty crowded about at the uh, inside the International Space Station and the space shuttle, but in actuality, there there were days when I wouldn't see one or two of the crew members, uh, even though I moved in and in and out of the International Space Station and the uh, the space shuttle. It's just that we're all busy doing our work, and uh, sometimes you just don't run into each other. So what you see down to the right there is our uh, cargo module, which is called Leonardo. And uh, the day after we docked, that is to say the flight day four, and uh, we docked it. And what you could see there, by the way, was a picture from the uh, control room with our lead director, uh, director Tony Sikatri in the far end. The Leonardo module was uh, grappled with an arm, which was uh, flown here by Kevin to right and Mike Barrett to left, and they controlled it from the lab in the station. And here we can see how they approach the module towards the Node 2 Nader docking port. And this is the view which uh, Kevin had on his computer and camera screen when he was closing in. After uh, quite some um, practical work to uh, get ready to open the hatch, uh, Frank to in there and I could uh, open it. We didn't know how the air would be inside, so we had masks and goggles on. 
but it was really very clean air inside, so we could quickly remove that. And uh, as you see, control center had already arranged for us that so there was lights on inside. It's a big module with a lot of uh, uh, things we brought up. And a very efficient way to uh, transfer the things is that you line up a lot of crew members and you pass the things along like this. Here it gets out of the amp and m through the node to and into the GEM, the Japanese uh, module. And it's a very fun work, actually. See how happy people are here. Uh, we also had the uh, payload with us on the shuttle from MIDEC. This is the MDS uh, payload, which was uh, transferred by Nicole and Pat into the gym and installed there. And I believe it will come back with Nicole also on the next shuttle. With the MPLM successfully installed, half the crew went to work on transferring those. The rest uh, got ready for the three EVAs that we were going to do on this mission. Uh, here we are the night before uh, the first one, uh, doing a little bit of uh, pre-EVA planning. And then uh, that crew went into the airlock to spend the night so they could purge their body of nitrogen. Uh, they'll uh, depress it down to 10.2. Once they spend the night in there, they get up the next morning. Uh, they uh, take a quick break while they're still wearing the mask. And then we close that uh, hatch once again, but this time with our uh, IV crew members that are going to help suit them up. And uh, they'll go through uh, a series of uh, about 200 steps uh, to get them in the suits and everything ready for them to go out. And that's Jose uh, down there on the right is our primary uh, suit up IV. And Tim providing some of the expertise, having been up there for a couple months uh, for this first EVA. And this one will be Danny and Nicole. Uh, that's Danny on the right and, and Nicole on the left as they're in the uh, equipment lock getting their suits on. And Nicole, you're right waist tether to the Ford UIA D ring. And I can confirm right waist tether Ford UIA D ring, they'll close by lock. Great. Danny, I see the airlock thermal cover is open. You can egress the airlock. Remember to avoid that MMOD strike. Roger that. I had the pleasure of being the IV crew member on the inside for all three of these EVAs. We had uh, great support from the ground, great procedures. Uh, it looks like uh, I could just look out the window and have a view of them, but the station has gotten so big that I relied uh, mostly on camera views uh, with the monitors, and we'd uh, keep up with their progress from in there. Had a lot of help on the flight deck. Uh, besides the procedures, we also uh, monitor cameras. Uh, one of the big tasks that we did spread over the first two EVAs was to change out an ammonia tank. Uh, the very first day, they removed the old tank from the uh, uh, port side of the space station, and then that was Nicole holding uh, an experiment called UTEF that came off the uh, Columbus module and would be stowed in the payload bay for return. On the second EVA, uh, they took the... Or, uh, they took the new uh, ammonia tank out of the payload bay and uh, carried that up to the port truss. Uh, Christer had a nice long ride holding, holding that and had uh, beautiful views. It takes about 90 minutes to go around the earth. Half of that's in the dark and the rest is light. And uh, when the sun is out, uh, the folks outside just have beautiful views. And there's a view of uh, Christer uh, on the arm. He thought he'd be staring at that ATA the whole way, but as it turns out, he had a pretty good view of uh, the Earth as it went underneath. There's Robert down in the control room. Uh, that uh, CJ mentioned what great support we got on the ground and, and from our uh, team. We had a couple hiccups with the spacewalks. There's uh, Danny. Uh, he spent a little bit of time in the payload bay, which means we would have great uh, views of him out the, out the uh, aft payload windows. Uh, he was on the starboard side. There's Christer 
uh, on the port side. Uh, once those EVAs uh, were over, uh, each one of them, of course, uh, the team would then open up the hatch and bring them in and get them out of the suits. From the time they put the suits on to the time they get out uh, exceeds about eight hours, so uh, it's also a lot of work. They've got water uh, with them inside the suits, but nothing else, so usually the first thing they wanted to do when they got out was to uh, go get something to eat and, and relax a little bit before the, uh, the next uh, EVA. It took the team uh, that uh, was inside uh, a lot of work after that. They would prepare the suits, get the equipment, the batteries charged, and everything ready for the next one. One of the major objectives was to transfer six very large racks from the MPLM, the logistics module, into space station. We had places prepared for that. You can see uh, Frank DeWinna and Krista here moving one of those large racks through. I believe this is uh, the T2, the new uh, treadmill that we're going to install on board. And you can see them moving it through a very small space between the hatches, but uh, they're both very skilled at moving them between the hatches, and it works just great for each of those six racks. You can see my space station crew, uh, Mike Barrett, moving the treadmill portion of that rack through. And, and as, uh, as most people know, this treadmill had lots of press and uh, has lots of different names, T2 being one of those. And you can see uh, Frank DeWinter here just continuing with the work. We have uh, lots of tools on board, and, and frankly, uh, the maintenance tasks and uh, the installation of new hardware is one of the favorites in terms of our work on board. There are so many items that get transferred during, especially an MPLM mission, that it's very important to keep very meticulous records. And uh, that's one great thing about this crew is keeping track of that. This is my seat liner and uh, Sokol spacesuit. And it's a, it's a major milestone between Nicole and myself because once hers is installed, then she officially becomes a space station crew member. We also had lots of equipment stowed behind the racks, and Jose is moving one of the racks out so that we can retrieve those items and get them installed on space station. And just another piece of hardware, you can see uh, CJ taking this through. And uh, it's, it's uh, largely a record keeping uh, task for this. And this is a note written by one of our fellow astronauts, uh, Marsha Ivins, and she's done a great job for us making sure that we keep track of all the items on board. You know, it's funny about space station is you end up doing things a lot differently. Here's Frank DeWinna using his legs uh, as a means of transporting things into the MPLM. You do things a lot different once you've lived on space for a couple of months. We had one of the bolts fail that connects the MPLM to space station, and so Bob Thursk and I removed the failed bolt and installed a new one, and uh, after that we were able to move out the MPLM and have it reinstalled back in the payload bay. And of course, uh, aside from all the technical stuff that we did, you know, if you're in space and you're not having fun, then you're doing something wrong. You can see here uh, Nicole taking full advantage of the volume with inside uh, the MPLM. They do a little bit of uh, acrobat uh, uh, maneuvers. Uh, the, the, the stowage on uh, orbit is, is uh, pretty tight, but uh, there's always room to have a little bit of fun. You can see Nicole here enjoying her, her time. You know, being the father of five, uh, I can tell you that the kids didn't care a whole lot about the EVAs, but boy, they loved uh, playing with food and playing with water. So here we were making uh, some of our uh, patented uh, uh, space eyeballs, and uh, down the hatch it goes for Tim. And uh, Kevin decided to take a new spin on the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Uh, you can see here both the peanut butter and jelly. Ne <laughs> neither one of them knows that the other one exists, so uh, kind of a, a very interesting thing. You can see here it's, uh, CJ was getting a little, little long in the, the top side. Give him a quick uh, haircut. And things don't uh, behave as you might expect uh, on the ground. We uh, start spinning them around in orbit, and we could amuse ourselves for hours with some of the, some of the simplest things. Uh, most notably, yourself. If you, you had nothing else around, you just kind of bundled yourself up in a little ball and, and just uh, sat there and uh, spun yourself around. This is what it looks like if you are uh, the one being spun up. 
And uh, I will tell you that if you let it, it'll really get you, uh, it'll really spin up your gyros. Of course, uh, moving the uh, pieces of equipment around are, are a, little bit, uh, a, lot, a little bit more fun because you can do your work and have fun along, uh, along the way. Uh, the space to move and work around uh, on a, in a 1G environment is really, really tight, but in a 0G, you can take full advantage of the, the third dimension, and uh, it's, it's really easy to move and work around in space. You can see here we're closing the hatch on the, on the MPLM, buttoning it up, and uh, getting it ready before it comes home. And uh, once we had the, the hatches closed, we went ahead and uh, the uh, robotics operators pulled it away from a uh, space station and then birthed it into the, the payload bay. After uh, we had all of our work done, next was a celebration. Uh, so we were invited by the space station crew members to come and have a feast, a traditional feast over in the International Space Station. This happened to be in Node 1. And of course, uh, since we had representation from so many countries, uh, the food came from all over. We had Belgian food, Swedish food, uh, Japanese food, uh, Canadian food, uh, and even good old-fashioned American food. <laughs> Eating in orbit is quite a challenge, and of course, drinking. Now, in the International Space Station, we recycle the urine and turn it back into potable water, and that's exactly what we're doing there, is drinking that. <laughs> uh, but uh, after all the work had been done, it was time to go. Uh, it was uh, bittersweet. There was uh, Nicole saying goodbye to us, and we put the uh, standoff cross uh, onto the docking, uh, docking alignment guides and um, closed the hatch one final time. Flight day 11 for our undocking on uh, flight day 12. And this is the magic button that makes everything go, makes the space station and the, and the space shuttle separate, the big right, undocking button. Guys. This looks good. 220, undocking push, hooks, close lights are both out. Okay, we got it. Yeah. You can use the other one for putting it away. Huh? Yeah. 20 seconds. Hooks at 9%. Okay. Yep, here we go. Okay, under complete light, two up and two are open. open. Houston and station from and discovery, panels. physical separation. Panels clear. Okay. Pedals clear. All right, LVLH on the gap. TCS yeah, is coming in. Okay. Got a 1.3 opening. A 0.13 opening. All right, I see LVLH. Good job. 0.7, right. got pulse, a good TCS. Pulse, pulse. No low Z is verified. 20.17. Well, uh, we undocked from the International Space Station. Our pilot, Kevin Ford, was at the controls, and he slowly backed us away. Uh, you can see there's a lot of activity on the flight deck, uh, people p taking pictures. Uh, most of the time when we did this undocking, there was just a couple people in the simulator, but it was a good challenge for Kevin to uh, do such a great job flying us uh, back out. It's a beautiful sight uh, when the sun comes up on the space station, and you see it in its, all its glory. You can't really appreciate it when you're docked to it. Uh, it was very big, but as we backed away, we could see really how big it is. It's just huge. Uh, it's going to have more volume than a 747 on the inside and uh, be bigger than a football field. After we backed out to about 400 feet, uh, Kevin initiated a fly around, and he flew us uh, 360 degrees around the space station while the crew continued to take pictures. This. Uh, Every once in a while when you see the camera jolt, those are the jets firing that maintain the attitude control of the uh, space shuttle. We did have a uh, failure which made this a little more challenging for Kevin as he uh, flew us around, but you can see he kept us right inside the circle there till we got uh, all the way around and then he did a, a couple of separation burns, uh, SEP 1 and SEP 2, and we uh, put the uh, station in the rearview mirror. We still had a lot of work to do that afternoon after the uh, set burns as we're moving away from the space station uh, with the robotics to inspect the uh, shuttle, make sure there had been no recent damage to any of the uh, thermal protection system. LHT, right on sail HT, and engine sail and safe HT are all 80. We agree, all four of those are 80. You can see we've already done the uh, Dioric burn, oh, and yeah, now that's, that's about 0.1 G. That's really nice. Give it a little toss up. 
We're hitting the atmosphere now. You can see the Mach meter uh, trip over to 25 there, which is uh, very good. Came into the Edwards Air Force Base, like I said. The shuttle flies very nicely. It's our lead uh, ascent entry flight director, uh, Richard Jones, and our Capcom, Eric Bow. We had a good repo, sir. Max. Flight Max late shoot for the drag shoot DTO. Still him. Discovery Houston on energy approaching the hack. No changes to winds or weather. For the crosswind DTO, we'll be late shoot deploy. Okay, we're late shoot deploy. Kevin and I have got our covers closed. Copy. Kevin Ford in control of the stick at this moment. Re Discovery now going subsonic, the fleet leading shuttle announcing its arrival at the landing site with a pair of sonic booms. The late afternoon sunshine gleaming off its thermal protection heat shield. Three minutes until touchdown. Rick Sterko has taken back the stick from Kevin Ford. The vortices off the wings, very obvious. Discovery continuing its turn around the heading alignment circle, aligning with runway 22 at Edwards Air Force Base. In a minute, you'll see the shadow on the clouds of the shuttle. Watch closely in the upper right. on the nominal, CJ. Runway inside, Houston. Guidance looks great. Thank you. I agree. Discovery, we copy. Copy. Rolling out. All right there. Rolling out. I'm going to do my first declutter with a great overlay. I agree. All right. Following guidance right down the middle. See you on center line. Copy. Good slope there. Yep. Directing back nicely. Very nice, CJ. Just like an S. Yep. Coming up on the pre-flare. Pre-flare right, next. Pre-flare on the gear. Arm with a good light. Quarter diamond. 304. See so your speed brakes right at 50. Happy. Really nice. A little lag. Yep. Coming down to the ball bar. On the ball bar. 400. Gear down, really please. Nice. Gear's on the way. I see you coming to the ball bar. Hey, a little more aft You are on the center line on the ball bar. Coming a little right. On the center line on the ball bar. Keep it coming up. Keep it coming up. Keep it coming up. There's 5230. Count 5230. Now you're at 4225. Hold on. Guys. 20, 15, 15. The shuttle uh, flies very much like our simulators that we have, both our shuttle training aircraft and the simulators at the Johnson Space Center. It flies much better than the simulators out here in the lobby of Space Center Houston. <laughs> Happy wheel stop. Welcome home, Discovery. Congratulations on an extremely successful mission, stepping up science to a new level on the International Space Station. <laughs> 